Hello, Julia. Welcome to this episode of Water Lab. Pleasure to see you after two, three years, I believe. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And you? Doing fine as well. Uh, it's late in the evening, but uh, good to start another conversation for Water Lab for our audiences. For, <laughs> yes. For the people who do not know you, uh, Julie is a German national. She has more than 10 plus years of work experience, is a marketing strategist as well as a user experience designer. Uh, she is a tennis coach as well as a very good tennis player. And I've seen that in person. <laughs> That's true. So are you linked with any club as well uh, for, for tennis or how is it you are a freelancer? Um. I mean, I've worked for one club in, I'm, I'm based in Munich um, at the moment, and um, I just uh, recently switched um, clubs in terms of my coaching activity, but I'm still playing for one club and coaching for another like big club in Munich. Okay, that's really cool. So my topic yeah. and theme today is around tennis, and somehow I am also a sports uh, lover, and tennis being one of the sports because of uh, the people that I have watched, I haven't played a lot of tennis. Uh, yeah. but I, whatever I have watched, uh, it's very interesting. And really, a gentleman's game. So, hitting so you, you are a tennis player yourself, and I have been following tennis for the last 20, 25 years. The time when Martin Navratilova was playing, when Sheffi Graham was playing, when Monica Seles was there, especially yeah. in women's tennis, you don't see that uh, overall overhauling domination of a single or two players. So Serena Williams is there. You have seen Ben Samuels uh, from Japan. Naomi Osaka came in. Simona Halep came in. Angelique Kerber has been around. But you still don't see that same aura as was there when Martino Navratil was Sheffi Graf or Monica Seles was playing. What do you think? Why is it so fragmented as compared to men's tennis wherein there are two, three people who are winning Grand Slam? I mean, I can just, I mean, all of what, I, what I'm what i saying are speculations, but um, I think um, it's just like, it's a very um, emotionally and mentally, like, um, it takes a lot of, like, strength or stability um, to maintain success over like a long time um and i mean in men's tennis there's you know a couple like roger federer like the big five i would say um that have done that um and as you said like i think in women's tennis the only person that i would say is like has been stable was really serena williams yeah. um and she is like a similar age um as like Roger Federer or like the men's are um but otherwise it's just it's it's a very like <laughs> fragmented marketplace I would say yeah. um there's um yeah there's lots of like young players that are making it because like in women's tennis like if you're 14 or like 14 to 18 you're like you know your, that's your prime age like yeah. for making it um, and in men's tennis it's like above the age of 20 is usually when when players make it big like it's mm -hmm. like it starts a lot earlier in women's tennis and so like the competition is younger and it's a lot like I feel like it's even like more physically oriented to some extent because yeah like it's just it's it's more volatile of a of an environment like women's tennis is 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 so different of a sport in some way um if you compare it to like men's tennis it's the same sport but it's like totally different how it gets executed to some extent so you mentioned strength and conditioning probably plays a greater role some somebody like yeah. Uh, was Niaki. She was world number one, but never really won a Grand Slam. Maria Sharapova struggled, has wins, and now she has gone out of tennis. She has retired as well. So, 
So there is something around probably, as you said, mental strength, which is lacking in women's tennis. Because you see, every new Grand Slam, there might be a new person who is coming out and winning. Yeah. I mean, it's also, I, like, all the, like, Angie Kerber is probably one of the fittest players on the tour. I, I think there was, like, a survey made, like, and it, it was proven that she is, like, the one that is, like, the best condition, basically. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, that doesn't mean that she's going to win a Grand Slam. Like, it's, 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 tennis is such a mental sport yeah. that, like, you can't, like narrow it down on conditioning only like your physical stance is it's just one part of the puzzle so so yeah it's a very demanding sport <laughs> yeah Angelic Karba she is the only one who has won three grand slams uh, I think in the last seven eight years and Serena Williams hasn't won anything after 2017 Australian Open so it is a very wide open uh, marketplace as you may call it in women's tennis yeah so coming to uh so you talked about strength and conditioning and with that's where probably your differences are between men's and women's tennis what do you think in terms of pay parity because that question has come a few times that they should be the same prize money for women's tennis as well as men's tennis do you see anything will happen on that front in coming years will atp do something about it I mean, um, I, I'm taking a strong stance for that as well. I think um, it's, it's, as I said, it's just, um, it's like there's biological differences why men and women um, execute something differently. But I, I strongly believe that um, the effort that goes in is like the same for men and women. And that's why, like, there should be equal pay because um, women's tennis is, you know, as attractive to watch, if not, like, it has, in some instances, even been, like, more attractive. Like, if you, like, mm -hmm. just, you know, look at some of the last, like, Grand Slam finals, the, the, the women's finals were actually, like, way, like, more um, intense to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as then the men's finals where it was like i don't know it, it was already clear like before like who was gonna win potentially mm -hmm. um and i mean i also watched the movie with like billy jean king with title uh title nine where mm -hmm. she like took a strong stance for that and and kind of like yeah like made the atp like I mean, she founded the WTA pretty much, right? Yeah, and yeah. made the, the men like really like think about, you know, the, 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 the parents that, that was like obviously like way, way crazier in those times. Um, and now it's, it's still not the same, but it's, it's gotten closer also, I think, thanks to her and to her like, uh, I don't know, I mean, she she put like a strong force of women behind her as well to to fight for that. Um, I really wish like it um, it would also like reflect in other sports as well in a similar yeah. fashion because I think I mean tennis is just a very like prominent sport because it's like a lot in the in the in the media and like it gets a lot of like public exposure. I would say. Yeah. Um, and and that's what makes the sport of tennis kind of like special in terms of also like giving exposure to women's sports. Um, but I think like there should be like equality in pay in all sports, not only in tennis. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean tennis <laughs> is pretty popular, as you rightly said. So. Uh, there is no dearth of uh, revenue advertising or even seats in stadiums. Uh, they get filled up in, in women's tennis as well. So there should yeah. be some movement of, towards uh, pay parity. Hopefully, I guess, uh, some of the leading players will take up that fight. Uh, people who are 1 to 10 or 
in, in top rankings. They should be speaking up for their rights, I believe. Uh, yeah. So something like if that happens will be good for women's tennis as well. Yeah, because Billie Jean King was also a player at the end of yes. the day. So yeah, yeah. So that's she. She used her power, and um, I mean, power has like a negative connotation, but um, yeah, um, maybe some of the the women in the on the tour right now should should also yeah, they need to speak up. Yeah, right. yeah. So moving but from I, yeah, I, I also just from what I, um, when I converse with like my male counterparts um, and there's a lot more male tennis coaches than there's female tennis coaches, obviously. And also there's a lot more male players than there's female players. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I always like, I mean, in the past, I, I was the one laughing with these players because they were like, yeah, like um, women don't deserve the same price money and all that because, you know, there's, like there's fewer like competition like the competition mm -hmm. is more scarce everything and the level of playing is just not the same and um like earlier on like when i was younger i i was kind of like agreeing with them um but now i'm i'm i mean i've become more feminist i would say and i've become okay. more aware of like you know what the cause of the difference is and um, that the difference in itself shouldn't um, shouldn't cause like another difference um, because it's just like a natural difference and mm -hmm. it's nothing that um, that women can make up for because it's just biology so so we we shouldn't be punished for that <laughs> yeah there, there was an interesting argument I remember sometime back against the pay parity which said that especially in Grand Slams, uh, women play mm -hmm. three setters while men uh, play five setters. And there should be parity in that before money parity can happen. So there was this argument uh, put forward by someone, I don't remember whom. And that was a valid question at that point of time. If we are talking about biological strength and other things, will women's tennis pick up uh, five setters as well to change But I don't think that would do the game any good because like I also think um, the more we are moving towards like fast paced environments in all areas of like entertainment and sports is entertainment at the end of the day, um, the, the farther like tennis will move behind if we keep with like the yeah. old fashioned way of playing, which is yeah. like you know a game can take up to 11 hours if if, if it gets maxed out so uh, and that's just i mean it adds something to the game for sure and like i as a tennis player i'm a big like proponent of like the third set uh, in like you know like we are only playing like a super tie break now instead of a third set and it's right. taking like like an aspect out of the game like all of the like endurance part is like mm -hmm. kind of gone and mm -hmm. i think that's kind of what gets highlighted in men's tennis like in the grand slams is like the endurance aspect and it's mm -hmm. not endurance only physical but also mentally um but yeah like there's not a lot of like actual like spectators that um that maybe appreciate that as as much as you know I mean, there's only like the hardcore fans that actually like want to see that, but um, the rest just wants to like watch like you know a game like like in soccer, like one and a half hours and it's done, you know. So, so that's like a tough call to make, also to to take women's tennis to that endurance level. Like that's what makes like men's tennis and women's tennis different to some extent as well, and. Uh, I mean, I think the men also like, you know, take a lot of, um, I don't know, like um, pride mm -hmm. in, you know, in in being able to play five setters and yeah. and and maybe that's also like, you know, let let the men be men and play yeah. five sets, like um, like that's that's 
totally normal and um and the, the women uh are women and they play free sets max <laughs> like yeah. that's just how it is yeah i mean it's a question of three variables as i see it's endurance it's spectators and it's time uh, yeah and that will somehow decide how this jet parity and pay parity plays out in the next few years so moving away from uh, the players and the women's tennis let's talk a little bit about technology so there is lots happening in tennis in terms of technology ball tracking has been there since very long players have started uh, using sensors within their rackets to understand what's their spin what's their speed and then there are all sorts of gadgets to monitor the performance in real time and then give feedback which one is really picking up what will be the technology like for next five ten years will it be more variables or is it more mass technology that we are going to see in tennis um i think like everything health related is gonna be going up um so like when it comes to like measuring your heart rate or like your blood pressure or like i don't know certain performance influencing factors i think um that have to do with the human body um i think are interesting also in terms of like you know when the the big heat wave like the fires were in australia and and there was people collapsing on the courts you know um it could have been like prevented maybe if if the if the players had worn like wearables already and and you know the officials could have seen like the the numbers spike up already and say like mm -hmm. oh we we got to cut this down like it's it's not healthy anymore for mm -hmm. like uh, the competitors um but in terms of everything else i just from like a consumer perspective must say that um that i've gone away like a little bit from wearables like i also don't don't use like a gps watch anymore for running like i used to or you know all these like fitness trackers like tracking your heart rate and everything mm -hmm. like that because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of like attention away from what actually matters and uh, when you when I go for a run or like I go somewhere, it's more about like the meditative uh, mm -hmm. purpose that I do it, and I want to enjoy nature. I want to like you know feel into myself, like what what kind of feelings do I feel, and that's nothing that like a smartwatch can tell me is like mm -hmm. you know how I'm feeling or how this is like helping me get into like a better mood or like work mm -hmm. through something in my ma mind. Like it's you know they're just numbers they don't really mean anything to me um but if the numbers have like a health purpose then i mean that's then it's like more functional makes sense. Okay. yeah it makes sense yeah so in terms of uh, something like a 5g rollout which will come into picture a few years every country is looking at rolling out the 5g network i personally feel it might be a tv killer and might bring in more technologies that people can view live tennis games over their mobile phones itself. Uh, there might be more infusion of AR and VR. How do you perceive something like that happening in Germany or Europe? Um, I mean, I'm personally pretty um, against 5G um, because I just don't like there's just too much uncertainty around like the medium to long term effects of um this kind of network on humanity as a whole um cuz like i've just you know read about like bees like dying in masses uh, around like okay. these like 5g um like where the, the ex that they're experimenting with that and it scares me to be honest because i think there's a lot of like yeah mass panic and and mm -hmm. people like moving around in autopilot and like if these frequencies are you know getting like heightened um mm -hmm. i mean electrosmog and everything so mm -hmm. i i'm 
it's it's i mean it's it's besides the point um of like um how it gives more exposure to like events obviously and mm -hmm. like you can um as you said like uh, you know you can really follow live tennis like on the go um which yeah. which would be a great benefit to to like tennis uh, the sport of tennis or like i mean it, it benefits like any sport really right um yeah but in some way like because like doing things on the go you're not really like giving it like a hundred percent of your attention like that's also something that I I don't think you should do something like half like with half of your attention and when you like I don't know like sit on a subway or like there's already enough people like just staring into their phones uh, like 24 7 um I don't know yeah. if if you shouldn't watch like in my vision like you should watch sports together with other people um and have like more of that like communal aspect to it um like there's public viewings of like soccer games there's no public viewings of like tennis games like i think that's like more of a direction that that i think should we should be heading more um because like everybody individually just watching like things on their devices is is isolating ourselves and obviously now with like you know the coronavirus like public um gatherings are not really <laughs> yeah. the, the, the thing anymore to do but um i still think there's a lot of power in people coming together and and watching something together yeah it's an interesting perspective so there are pros and cons and there are side effects of uh, technology as well but for vendors of 5G technology, it means uh, vendors as well as users. It means more money, more consumer interactions for them. So uh, mobile providers, service providers, for them, they see it in a very different way. Uh, then understanding the side effects of it, radiation, yes, I think that's something which has to be counted in before something like that gets rolled out. So one last query which I had for you. I believe you also love Roger Federer and I also love Roger Federer. He hasn't, Always. Won, a, he hasn't won a Grand Slam somehow. Are we going to see an end of an era probably by US Open this year? Or do you think he has enough left in tank to get one more Wimbledon title this year? Will he fight it out? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure about him winning another title to be honest. Um, but I think he's gonna keep competing just because he loves the sport so much. I really yeah. hope he will yeah. because like, I really want to, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to be like so devastated when he, when he stops competing, yeah. uh, because that means I have to watch all of the <laughs> games that he used to play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. People have to be prepared for like a post yeah. post Roger Federer depression. <laughs> yeah, it, it will be it will be hard. I'm still hoping against home if he can just pull up his socks and get a Wimbledon title before he goes away. So hopefully there is enough in tank. Yeah, but for me it's less about like him actually like winning the title. It's just like watching him play gives me so much joy. It's like yeah. And obviously, if he wins, it's even better. But it's more about just like watching him play and knowing that he's he's still doing it, even if he's yeah. so old. Like that's like so admirable, you know. And yeah. it gives a lot of like hope to just players around the globe that you can, you know, play tennis on a really high level until like yeah, yeah like quite a high age. Like he's almost forty by now. So yeah. so that's. Yeah. That's pretty inspiring to a lot of like also like elderly players out there, and I, yeah. I mean I count myself among them now too. Like I'm <laughs> yeah. on the I'm playing on the young seniors tour now. <laughs> so. Oh okay. 
<laughs> that's how yeah. they call it in germany yeah i mean my only wish is uh, i don't want to see uh, roger federer's grand slam title being overtaken by anyone and it is becoming harder with each grand slam the way djokovic is playing and nadal will return to his favorite surface so his title drought it needs to end probably if he can do a last four rounds <laughs> yeah, but but Novak Djokovic will never be as as amazing Popular. of a human yeah. being. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. no matter how many titles he has. <laughs> yeah, sure. Great, Yulia. Great perspective. Uh, it's been an honor to listen to your views on different topics, and I'm sure our audiences will also love listening to what you have to offer. And I'm positive, maybe in future we can touch base on other topics, especially around consumer experience and. Uh, marketing strategy. Those are yeah, awesome. that would be awesome. Yes, so I'll get in touch with you on those topics. But it's been a pleasure to have you on board today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Feelin dang. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out to me. Have a have a good Sunday, and I hope to see you soon again. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thank you.